Very proud of this team. Uh, one of the few undefeated teams left in the country. And uh, give Miami a lot of credit. They came, there's there some question mark about after last week's disappointing loss, how would they play? They played good. They played hard. Um, that's as, as hard as I've seen them play. I thought they played us like they did Texas A&M. And, and I said, if they did that, they could beat about anybody in the country. And, and that's what I saw tonight. They fought, they competed. Um, Tyler Van Dyke made play after play. We had trouble getting to him. We, we thought we would uh, get to him better, um, but, but we won the game. And that's the most important thing and proud of this team. Uh, very few undefeateds, only two left in the ACC. Um, and uh, I thought we stayed pretty healthy uh, tonight, uh, but that was a heavyweight fight. That, that was a, a fight from start to finish. Uh, proud of our coaches adjusting at halftime. We came out and moved the ball in the third quarter and we stopped them in the third quarter. And, uh, that's what good staffs do. Uh, a lot of times it's hard to win a game when you're behind at halftime. A lot of people can't overcome uh, the adversity and come back and win. Um, obviously, the, the, the positive things were uh, Drake throwing his touchdown passes. Uh, I mean, uh, uh, three touchdown passes to uh, uh, Tez Walker, uh, and as well as he played, really, really proud of him. And, and um, we were 4-0 and without him. Obviously, we have a chance to be much better with him. And now that people have seen him, it's, gonna, it's going to change the way people play defense against us. His presence is a, a game changer. Because do you double team him? Do you, do you move people out and give him more opportunities to, to run the ball? Um, and then the second part of that is uh, um, we, we gave up four sacks the first half, only won the second half, and, and did a much better job um, in, in that part of it. Uh, Drake's four touchdown passes uh, were really good. He scrambled two or three times. He had a, a zone read that he, he made a good run on. So proud of him and, and also proud of uh, the rushing game. Rushed for over 200 yards against a defense that was not giving up 100. And uh, Omarion Hampton's really a special player. Uh, defensively, uh, probably the difference in the ball game was forcing four turnovers and, and giving none. Uh, two interceptions and, and two fumbles. Um, so really, really proud of our defense that they are now starting to, to force more fumbles. And they kept a really good rushing team to under 100 yards rushing. They only had 91 yards rushing, uh, even though we, we couldn't get to him and sack him in the first half. We got three sacks in the second half. Uh, the, the biggest concern you have is the number of penalties. We've never had that many penalties. Um, and I'll, I'll, we had a lot more than they had. So we'll just look at all those uh, tonight and uh, turn them into the ACC office and see if, if they were real. And um, that, that's just all I can say. Questions? The halftime adjustments, significant ones had to be made on both sides of the ball. What were some of the primary things that you needed to change on both sides? Well, the, the, the biggest thing was if, if one of their guys was better than one of our guys in the offensive line, and some of them were just uh, run us down, we had to help some. We couldn't just sit here and have sacks. Uh, so move the quarterback, have quicks, um, have some quicks with double moves, try to get the ball to Tez more because it, it seemed like he was a guy that was a difference maker uh, and run the ball better. And Omarion had, what, two long runs that were called back. So he would have had uh, well over 200 yards and we probably would have had 300 if we hadn't had the penalties. Uh, defensively, I think the biggest thing was we, we were letting them squirt some, some runs. There were some leaks in the A gap and we, we got that adjusted at halftime. Um, and, and we got more sacks the second half, so we were able to tee it up and keep them in front of us. I was really disappointed in, in the deep throw uh, when we're up by, uh, what, 18, 20, 20 something, 21. Uh, there was six minutes left. You can't let them get behind you. You just can't do that. that that's ridiculous. So uh, disappointed in that, but the, the best thing is we didn't play our best game against a really good team. We still won by 10 points and have a chance to get better. football you guys have played maybe since you've been here that third quarter uh probably i mean we've played some pretty good ball this fall but but that was that was a good third quarter and, and i was disappointed again that we kicked field goals at the end we've got a fourth and one and we get shoved back and we don't or third and one we get shoved back and don't make it and then at the end we we kind of messed it up we, we we don't kill the clock well so we've got to continue to keep the same offense uh, and not get so conservative and kill the clock. 
and and we we just we're still we're still not where we need to be there. Mark, uh, the game that Martin Hampton had, obviously with the 197, he also caught for a touchdown as well. I think he's had 15 carries for you know almost every game. Would you classify him as probably the workhorse back this year, just kind of the way? You yeah. Him in the, in the yes, I, th I think Omarion's really good. He, he's uh, powerful enough to run inside. I was so proud in that third quarter of the offensive line, or maybe right before the half. Uh, there was a play where he got stopped around the two, and we said we need five yards every time as a team. Every time somebody touches the ball, we need five yards. Any more you get after that's on you. And the offensive linemen all got behind him and pushed him for the, the, the six or eight more yards, and, and that's when I, I thought we'd win the game. Mac, this game showed that you guys were ready to handle success and the accolades that are sure common with the record you guys still have. Uh, I, I think it's progress. I didn't like some things in practice on Wednesday, and I told them, and they adjusted it. But we didn't play it well enough for us to start walking around with our chest stuck out. We, we've got to you, – you can't have that many penalties. We, we've got to clean that up as coaches and players. Um, and, and we still gave up too many explosives, and, and we had too many negative running plays. So there, there's a lot of things that we can do better. I didn't like our kickoff coverage all the time still, even though we did better. And we changed it up some with a squib, and then we had a sky kick. Uh, but still, they, they got it back to the 35 a couple of times, and that's, that's not who we need to be. So was that the message in the locker room? Like, I feel like in the past, this would have been like a big celebration, but what, what was it like in there? No, the, the celebration was, I'm proud of you. It was a heavyweight fight, and you, you came from behind. You hung in there, and you won. Uh, the truth is, we didn't play very well. And we got a lot of things to fix. And I said, programs that are really good don't have to play well to win every time. I said last week we played really well. This week we didn't play well. And part of it was Miami. Uh, but, but that doesn't matter if you're going to play against great athletes like they've got, you, you've got to play well. So uh, this will be a week that we can really coach them hard because they know they didn't play as well as, as uh, we would have liked to. You talked about the adjustments, but you know, what was the demeanor like maybe at halftime? It was the first time you trailed at the half this season. Like, what did you sense from your guys? And um, I mean, what did you see happen? Yeah. I told the guys that, that uh, we were going to win the game. Um, but this, this was a fight. It was a heavyweight fight. And it's exactly what we needed. If we're going to be good and if we're going to step up, uh, this is a, a determining moment in our season that, that you got to go back out there and fight because this, this, is, this is a battle. It, it wasn't going to be easy. And uh, they didn't blink. They got excited coming back out on the field and, and obviously took the game over in the third quarter. Mac, with Tez, you obviously said all week he would be a difference maker. But did you sense from him that he was ready for this moment because he had waited so long and finally he was integrated into the game plan? You know, Andrew, you never know. He doesn't say very much. He's so humble. I said, are you excited about tonight? And he'll go, mm-hmm. I mean, that's about all you get. So you'll, you'll have him here in a minute. and You won't get a whole lot. He just keeps talking about how blessed he is and how much fun it is for him to play. And, but he, he's tough, he's smart, he blocks well. He, he, he's, uh, I thought he played unbelievable for his first game really here where he actually got to practice a little bit. And let me say before I forget, what, what an unbelievable crowd tonight. Um, every seat was full. I thought they made a difference and a huge difference in the game. Um, I thought it was really good last week, better tonight. So I'm really, really proud of our fans. Uh, they they, uh, they made a difference in next week's fall break, but they, they've got to bring it next week. We've got to come back and, and, and work really hard to be 1-0 and and, and be 7-0. Mac, Mac, what Tez's presence is going to do to the way teams defend you, but some of the plays he made tonight, I mean, his presence changes the way, some of the things you can do on offense. I think the second touchdown probably in particular. What, now that he's, as you said, integrated, what can he do for your offense and what can you do differently with him available? Luke, what we'll have to do is, is see how people are going to play us because it's going to be hard to play him with one guy. And if you put two out there, uh, that means you're going to have to have fewer inside for the run because a lot of people now are bringing safeties down and trying to stop the run. So you've got Omari on inside, you've got Drake inside. Um, if you blitz, you're one-on-one, -on -one, uh, so you better get there. Um, and, and then he also, when he draws that attention, will open up. Nate and, and J.J. Jones more and give them opportunities as well. Really sorry that we lost uh, Kobe Pesar for him and for us. Uh, so thank goodness that Tez was eligible because that helped us. And Kobe was running on grass, uh, a route, and he planned his foot and, and um, got hurt.
we, we thought he tweaked it a little bit, sprained his ankle, and uh, here he is. He'll he'll be out indefinitely. So I, I really hate that for him, and I hate for Ben Kiernan that uh, we got a punt blocked last week, and he runs and makes the first down, and and he gets hurt, and he's out for the year, and and he'll have his operation probably in another week or so. Yeah, we got time for two more. <laughs> He's had a lot of really good games for y'all. Do you think this might have been one of his best all-around games for you? Yeah, he, he, Cedric's such a leader, and he's, he's got so much confidence. Uh, and I thought it was good that, that we got up and, and we didn't finish the game like we needed to because he'll be all over him, much less me. And, and we'll go back and look at it. Probably should have fallen on the ball in the end zone instead of running out to the forward. We'd have gotten it out uh, to the 20. So there's some things that we can correct that, that – uh, uh, even for him, but I, I love Cedric Gray. The fact he turned down being a second round draft choice and came back for all the right reasons is so unlike what's happening in college football. I'm, I'm so proud of him and he got the breath knocked out of him when he, he went down, so it, it wasn't anything more than that, thank goodness. Andrew, with as much the, as you're saying that needs to be fixed, especially with all the penalties and stuff tonight, yet you're up three touchdowns in the fourth quarter on them. Does, are you getting a pretty clear indication of maybe where this team's ceiling is and how, how much better can you guys get? I think this team can be really good. We've got to coach them better, and they've got to play better for us to get where we want to go. Uh, we obviously uh, – we're bowl eligible. That wasn't something that happened around here a long time ago. Now nobody even thinks about it. Um, this is a game in, in, in sometimes in our past that people would have thought we would have lost because people had bragged on us, because we were walking around and, and Miami came in to, to upset us. Uh, this is the fifth time we've beat Miami, which is one of the top programs in the country. Um, and, and they recruit as well as anybody in the country. And my gosh, they look good every time I look out there. Uh, so really, really proud of, of this win tonight because it was a, a very difficult win. And, and give Miami credit for coming here and fighting um, and, and having a chance to win. All right, thanks, Coach. Thank you all. Thank you.